Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you in the name and in the love and the peace of Jesus Christ. And for our daily word today, we're uh, looking at our journey through the Bible reading in the Gospel of John. And, and in, in particular, John chapter 4, verse 14, where Jesus, he's in this encounter with a, a Samaritan woman. And, and first of all, of course, it's extraordinary that, that Jesus would actually choose to go through the, the Samaritan village, but it, uh, it seems that Jesus had a purpose, a very clear purpose for that day, uh, what he wanted to accomplish. And he has this encounter with the Samaritan woman. He asked her for, to draw water for him. She's surprised that he would actually take water from a Samaritan given the animosity between them. And they have this encounter where she discovers that he is the Messiah and her life and her eternity are, are transformed. But as a part of that conversation in John chapter 4, 14, we read this. Jesus says, those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them giving them eternal life. And, and I'd like to share with you also a scripture from Isaiah. As we've, we've talked about before, the Old Testament points forward to Jesus. He is the fulfillment of God's promises. They are all yes in Jesus. Listen to this from Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. So, a couple of things about this. One is that we are thirsty. We human beings have a longing for God. Now, people have different opinions about that. Uh, there are some who, if they're honest, just don't want there to be a God. They, they come to the conversation, they come to thoughts about God with that predisposition, that, that hardness of, of heart. And, and they will say that, well, you know, religion was a, uh, it was a survival advantage at one point in the development of, uh, of societies and so forth. And so that's what that's about. And so this, this universal longing that really everybody has to acknowledge because it is universal. It doesn't, it's not taught. It's just, it just is. We have this longing for God, this longing for the spiritual, for something bigger than ourselves, for something beyond. There is this thirst inside of us. So they will try to explain it away, but it is persistent and it is real. And you have to ask yourself always with these questions, what answer has the most explanatory power? Is it simply that this, this desire for religion was it a survival advantage at some point? Does that make the most sense? Or does it make the most sense to say, do you know what? We actually were made by God and we were made for us. There is a thirst for God as just the same that there is a, a thirst for water that's built into our bodies because our bodies need water. There is a thirst for water. There is such a thing as water. There is hunger. And so there is such a thing for food. Our bodies need food. And the same, it is the same way with our souls. We need God. As St. Augustine discovered, and he, he recorded in his words, that we find no rest until we rest in God. Right? We, we have this need within us, and it is satisfied by the Lord. It, it's described as a, as a thirst, and that, I think, is is just the only way to describe it. There is this need, this parched nature to our souls that longs for God. And I, I want to invite you also to notice that this, this gift of living water from Jesus, it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them. Uh, th this is living, moving water. Uh, you, you could picture instead of just a still pond, you could picture uh, a river, uh, maybe a spring-fed river would be the best way to, to see this, right? That there's always water coming, there's always a supply, there's always more, it's always life-giving, it's always clean. This is pointing directly to the gift of the Holy Spirit, that it is that intimacy with God, to actually have the Spirit of the living God dwelling within you that actually 
fulfills that desire, that longing, and it is such a blessing. It is such a joy. I tell you, particularly, I experience this in times of worship where you're just so full. You, you just are so satisfied that you glorify the Lord because He's touching your heart, because you are experiencing His manifest presence in your life. Isaiah 12, 3, with joy, with joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. And so here's where I want to go with this is, first of all, let's don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. People's hearts are longing for what we as ambassadors of Christ have to offer them. And secondly, let us not voluntarily uh, cause our souls to dry up. Let us remain in fellowship with the Lord day by day by day, reconnecting with the Lord, making sure that we're walking in fellowship with Him, making sure that we're not grieving the Spirit, that, that we are in alignment, that we are walking with the Spirit, that we are yielded to Jesus Christ, that our lives belong to Him and that we are in His hands. Let us continue in fellowship each and every day in our journey through the Bible and in, in not only those scripture readings, but our meditation on those scriptures. What is it that God's saying to us in our prayer time, getting before the Lord and aligning our hearts and pleading with the Lord and, and sharing our lives with the Lord? Let us not just voluntarily just make our souls so parched and dry. Let us remain in fellowship with the Lord. May it be so in Jesus' name. Uh, I love you, church family, and until we get a chance to speak again, may God bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.